Hi, this is the 2000 Honda Insight. Um, a lot of people don't know this about this car, but it is all aluminum. The body is aluminum, and the frame is aluminum. Extremely high quality aluminum. Um, Honda built this car in the same manufacturing plant as the Acura NSX, which is also an aluminum, aluminum car, but that's a $70,000 car. This car is completely stock. Those rims came with the car. They're aluminum as well. Honda actually was the first company, automaker, to mass produce and sell a hybrid. The Prius came a few months later in America. The first automaker to, to mass produce and sell a, a hybrid in America, that is. Um, this is a very advanced car, especially for being the very first hybrid on the road in America in, uh, as far as being mass produced and sold to consumers. Um, I believe there was 13,000 of these sold in America and 17,000 total sold worldwide. So most of them were sold in America. Um, I'm going to talk about a few different things on the car. Uh, for one, this car has about 322,000 miles and it still runs like new. I'm no longer using the hybrid system or at least the battery, uh, hybrid battery because it, got, it became weak and on this car, it's still in the car but you can just turn off the switch and run it as a gas car and I'll show you how to do that basically you just lift the back uh, your little trunk space here there's two um, like clips that hold this in you pop them out right here you pop that up pop that up just by lifting um, and then I already took these screws out it had this here and there I took those out so to make it easier to show you um, you want to take those two screws out remove this cover and there is your your basically your battery breaker switch um, I have it switched to the off position you see here there's gonna be a lock on it this little piece slides over that and you'll have to pop it off in order to turn this off because it kind of holds it on the in the on position and I've been driving the car for many many months um, without the use of the hybrid battery and the small battery under the under the hood still works fine also I wanted to mention on these covers a lot of people say how do we maintenance the car these covers come off very easily with just a couple screws um, underneath so it's very easy to service uh, to get to the wheel these covers come off right here this line just just pops off and I've never had any trouble with those covers at all okay I'm popping the hood okay hood latches right here Okay, I took the cover off here. Um, it's actually just taken off. I, I'm just because it's like to make it easier to show you things. Um, this is a three-cylinder, one-liter engine, and it's a VTEC motor. So it's Honda's basically their high their high-performance design. So it's like it's basically a high-performance small engine is what it is. Um, it has a red line of 6,000 RPMs, which is very high. Um, there's, you can see a lot of space here. Catalytic converter, two oxygen sensors, one here and one there. Um, the, it has three coils. And there's no spark plug wires. The coils sit right on top of the spark plugs and actually plug directly into the spark plugs. So here's one coil, here's a coil, and here's a coil. And you can just unplug them right here. There's a little lock switch there. 
the motor takes um, uh, 0 20 and here's the fuel injectors one two three <clears throat> and this is the intake manifold which is plastic or some lightweight plastic like material air box I wanted to also mention the battery that we're using here is a <clears throat> Um, this is a good battery to use because I, what I like about it is it's 500 cold cranking amps and it's an Everstart. It fits right in. I got it from Walmart. Came with a, I believe a two year warranty, free, free replacement. It, um, it's model number 51-4 and it has plenty of power to start the engine. I want to talk about <clears throat> a project I'm working on right now. I'm in the research and design stages. I'm going to be designing a system or putting a system in this that vaporizes the gasoline. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I want to keep it as simple as possible. What I learned about uh, these engines that we use in our cars, gasoline powered engines, is most of the fuel, or a lot of the fuel, does not get burned in the combustion chamber. That's where the engine, where it explodes and pushes the piston down. There's three pistons, three cylinders, and that's what makes the car move. That's where you get your power from, is that explosion. The only fuel that burns is the fuel that has successfully become a vapor. Liquid gasoline, as a liquid, does not like to burn. It doesn't want to burn. A vapor is extremely expo explosive. So, what I'm thinking about doing here, I have a couple of different ideas, and I did not, these are not original ideas. There's over 900 patents on gasoline vaporization, vaporization systems, which is basically over 900 different ways you can vaporize gasoline. And all of them, increase fuel mileage, decrease tailpipe emissions, improve power, give you more miles per gallon. So it's a win-win situation in every way. What I'm thinking of doing is, here's the fuel line right here on this car. Okay, this line is the fuel line. It goes to the, it goes into here. And then this, connects to the fuel injectors down there. Okay. Now he, this, I believe, recirculates the gasoline. It keeps the gasoline circulating back into the gas tank and it's vacuum controlled. So my plan is to bypass this so the valve does not open and does not allow gas to go back to the tank. I will put a... I need to reduce the pressure of the gasoline because high pressure gasoline does not want to vaporize. It, 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 it's more resistant to vaporizing at a fixed at, a, at the same temperature. In other words, if I want to vaporize this gasoline at 400 degrees, I need it as close to atmospheric pressure as possible. So what I plan to do is, and by the way, gasoline vaporizes at 400 degrees. That's what we want to reach. Um, if you look up fractional distillation of crude oil, you'll see that at 302 degrees, gasoline separates from from the oil and all the other uh, you know, liquids that are in the, the oil, in the crude oil. Um, but 400 degrees is, is what people are, are vaporizing their gasoline at, um, based on my research and, and study. Um, if you have any insight on that, please do share, but what, that's what I found. So I'm trying to get to 400 degrees minimum. Um, I've also read that gasoline auto-ignites at 536 degrees Fahrenheit, which means it'll just ignite by itself once it reaches that temperature. So we want to, I'm thinking around between 400 and 450 would be a good range to, to, to reach and be safe. Uh, that would safely vaporize 100% of the gasoline and not allow it to auto-ignite. Now, this is going to be a sealed system anyway. We're not going to have gasoline exposed to the air out here. The way I want to do, do this is preserve the original system, use the fuel injectors to inject the vaporized gas. 
So what I'm planning on doing is running a pressure regulator here to reduce the pressure. Um, by the way, this line is under a lot of pressure right now. It's, I don't know what it's at. It's like over 20 PSI or so. I don't know the exact pressure. But the reason for that is when you use fuel injectors, the high pressure helps the fuel injectors to spray that fuel in the cylinders as a fine mist. But it's still a liquid mist. It's not a vapor mist. There's a difference. So with what we're doing, we're going to send pure vapor through the, the fuel injectors. Which, by the way, if, I'm going to try to use these fuel, inje fuel injectors, but if they don't work, I'm going to go to natural gas fuel injectors because those are made for, for working with a, vap a, a vaporized fuel, which is natural gas. Natural gas is already vaporized. Natural gas boils at, uh, you know, room temperature, at, at basically at what the air that we're comfortable in is a boiling temperature for gas. That's why it's gaseous and not liquid. Um, I'm going to run a uh, copper or steel fuel line from here. Well, to, first I'm going to go to a pressure regulator to reduce the pressure down to 1 PSI. Then I'm going to run a fuel line, copper or steel, around the exhaust system. A lot of it. Like maybe I'll go around the catalytic converter, round and around and around, many, many feet all the way down, this whole area, all the way down. I need to get that fuel real hot. From what I've read, my, my uh, catalytic converter gets to about 350 to 400 degrees. And if I, in, if I wrap that fuel line with some insulation, that should help keep the heat in to get that, help that fuel get hot. So that should completely vaporize my gasoline. Give as long as I lower the pressure. The pressure has to be low. I'm gonna try with I'm gonna try one psi, and see how that does. Okay. Then after it's it's getting heated down there by wrapping the fuel line, the the steel or copper fuel line around the catalytic converter or exhaust system down here, it's gonna come back up and connect to here. Okay. I'm gonna connect it back into here. It's gonna go into this line. I'm gonna buy, I'm not gonna use this. I'm gonna I'm gonna cap off the vacuum here in here so that the vapor fuel does not get returned to the gas tank because then it, then it would just cool off on the way back to the tank and turn back into liquid. We don't want that. So, and plus I've read that, and from what I've studied and read, vaporized fuel is very cold. So I, was, I thought that the gas would have been hot up here coming in, having just been vaporized. But once gasoline has been vaporized, it's actually a very cold a very cold fog. Very, very cold. I might even get icicles on here. I don't know. That's what people are saying that that's what's happening to their systems uh, from what I've been reading. Anyway, um, the, we'll hopefully have pure vapor coming in here at 1 PSI, which is 1 pound per square inch, and then being fed into each cylinder as the injectors open. Now these cars have advanced computer systems which should be able to adjust. I'm hoping will adjust to the, the um, the power. I th what my thoughts are is going to happen is the idle is going to go up, it's going to run, I guess, leaner. It's going to have more power given the area of fuel being injected. Um, this is all experimental, but it's based on solid research and experience from people that I've been studying their works and their systems. Uh, and many people are running gasoline vaporization systems on their car. And it works. It's something people are doing in every single in every single situation. Um, some people are not getting the fuel hot enough, and they're only vaporizing some of the fuel, and therefore they're they're they, they're either achieving no increase in gas mileage or a very little increase. It's absolutely essential that all of the gasoline is vaporized. The other way I'm thinking about vaporizing the gasoline. That's one one way right there that you just saw is using an ultrasonic transducer or an ultrasonic humidifier um, same thing and this will vaporize the gasoline without any heat it uses ultrasonic waves you can look uh, you can do a search on Google for ultrasonic humidifier um, there's many out there there's industrial sizes there's household sizes and you can even just buy the ultrasonic transducer itself and build your own. You have many options and many choices. 
These are made for vaporizing water, but they also can vaporize gasoline with no problem. They use very low, low power and they vaporize the gasoline or water at a very fine, fine mist, which is what we want. I've run out of time. I'll make more videos. Enjoy. I mean, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Bye.